Hello and welcome back to Grim Survival. This is the third time I've tried to make this video. Today is September 12th, 2019, and the reason I've tried to make it two other times is because people keep calling my phone. They have this thing called airplane mode. I'm going to try it out next time I make a video. Anyway, today's video, we're going to talk about a dictator. We are in need of a dictator. I am not talking about United States government or any government entity. We are not talking about that at all, but I will get to the point in a minute. But before we do, I have an announcement to make. It's over here. I would like to tell you that I have to say goodbye to my longtime companion in my truck for the past, oh, four and a half to five years. In my trucks, I should say, is my Rand McNally GPS. It has completely died on me. Well, it's not its fault. The power port right here is broken. Some of the pins are bent and the plastic thing that holds it together to this ridiculously old plug is no longer functional. And I could probably replace it if I can get in there and pull it out and solder it. And I may attempt to do that because driving trucks without a truck GPS is increasingly difficult, especially if you're not familiar with where you go. So my job just got harder. And yeah, this thing, I, I will miss it dearly. Um, if you don't know, truck GPSs are specifically designed for trucks. They keep you from running under low clearance bridges. Uh, most trailers are average trailer is 13 feet, six inches high. And a lot of bridges, especially in the Chicago area, do not go that high. So you cannot go under them. And you may have seen this in videos where trucks hit overpasses and the whole top of the trailer gets sheared off. It, it happens. It's because truck drivers don't pay attention. Go figure. Uh, but anyway, um, I will not be buying a new one anytime soon. They're expensive. You could probably buy a Smith & Wesson Shield for less than I paid for that thing. So, yeah, just so you know. That being said, goodbye, Rand McNally. All right, to the point of the video, dictators. I think we are going to be in need of dictators. Now, like I said, I'm not talking about modern times or United States government. I don't think we need a dictator in our current government. I think we already have one. His name is not Trump, but you know, if you want to look into that, go ahead. I will make a different video of that another day, more than likely. Um, what I mean when I say we need it, we'll need a dictator, is I'm talking about uh, without rule of law or SHTF scenarios where the government is gone for whatever reason. It, it's just, there is no government for whatever reason. And these kind of scenarios, Scenarios or any kind of scenario like that, what you're going to see is the Negans come out. And what I mean by that, is, and if you don't know what Negan is, of course, he's a character from uh, The Walking Dead show. And and I, I didn't really watch the show that much. I, I maybe like two seasons of it. And I did see parts of the Negan thing and read about him more than I watched him. But it, he was an interesting character from a, a psychotic standpoint. So, yeah. anyway... Negan, what he did was he took over the resources, really, of a large area and and took over the people really he was in charge of a lot of people and a lot of resources in a large area and he was not a very good leader depending on your opinion in his opinion he was doing all the right things for all the right reasons but in the opinions of pretty much everyone else he was a psychotic dictator who was murdering people for no reason he had this weird baseball bat that had barbed wire like nailed to it. it it wrapped around it nailed to it it was it was kind of interesting people have tried to do that on youtube they end up cutting themselves some of them accomplish it but anyway that's not the point baseball bats with barbed wire are probably not legal keep that in mind anyway i'm going to say anyway a lot in this video keep that in mind but dictators what well what i mean when, when i say we need dictators is we're going to need dictators if you don't want someone like the psychotics aggressive people who want to be in charge because they want to be in charge to get away with whatever sadistic things they're going to do, then you're going to need to appoint someone. You're going to need a leader. If you already have an established group as a prepper or a survivalist, any, any kind of a group where you plan to get together in the event of SHTF or end of government, and you probably already have somebody who is in charge of that group. Somebody has been nominated the leader or somebody who started it just is the leader, whatever your hierarchy is in your particular group. And this is a good thing. You should have a group. You should have a leader of that group. So you already know who's in charge and, and everybody has an individual job based on their skill set. This is just uh, leadership basics 101, really. But yeah. What you're going to see is a lot of chaos in an end of government type of scenario where people are just going to not know what to do. A lot of people are just going to start doing what they need to do to survive. A lot of people are going to get desperate. They're going to do bad things. A lot of sick and psychotic people are going to do a lot of sick and psychotic things. You're going to see murders, rapes, etc., etc. All the worst things you can think of are going to happen. Do not, do not think it won't because it, look at modern times with rule of law that we have right now look at the sadistic things that people do if you've ever watched mainstream media news service 
yeah, look at the sadistic things people do. That's what they like to report on. You're talking mass shootings, murders, and, you know, all the bad stuff. So, yeah, people do it all the time with the police that are here now. What makes you think it's not going to be worse when there are no police? And so you're going to have areas like small towns um, that are going to come together. They're going to form a type of government in the small town. They will probably appoint security. The government will probably consist of the town's former mayor or current mayor, uh, maybe the local sheriff, police officer, whatever it is. Small towns are going to come together. Um, they're either going to come together or they're going to fall apart. If no local government in a small town or no group of people in a small town takes charge of the small town, you're going to see someone aggressive like a Negan type of person come in and be a dictator. So when I say we need a dictator, I mean you need the one guy in charge of your group, one guy. Now this one person of course could have uh, you, you know, a cabinet, a council, whatever it is, people he can delegate powers to, and this is going to be needed in the long run, but at first the one person needs to be in charge. He needs to be aggressive. He needs to be in charge. And I say he because in a, you know, don't get me wrong. Okay, you're going to get me wrong because I'm going to say it anyway. In an SHTF scenario, females are not going to be in charge. They're just not because if you look at the order of how the world works and how it's worked for, I'm fixing the phone, it fell, and how the, it, it's the mount is actually falling off the dashboard. It's magnetic mount. It's glued to the dashboard. It's falling off. I need new glue. Sorry for sticking my hand in your face constantly. Anyway, females, they are not going to be in charge because if you look at the natural history of the planet, how it's always been, men are naturally stronger and more aggressive. Stronger and more aggressive. Now, of course, you can point out some bodybuilding female that can bench press me and break me in half. That's fine. That happens. It's true. But there's always a male going to be stronger. Your average 15-year-old boy is stronger than your average bodybuilder woman. It's true. Statistically speaking, it is true. Men are going to reassert themselves. You're not going to have the, the processed foods and the, you know, the radiation and all the various things that affect the testosterone levels of males today. You're going to have a big boost in testosterone. Men are going to become men they are going to have to. They are not going to have a choice. You're either going to be a man or you're going to be somebody's word that starts with a B. Yeah. Women, I suggest you be in a group. Canadian Prepper did a great video on this particular subject, men versus women in SHTF. If you can find it, it's been a couple years ago. Check it out. It does go into the psychological aspect and why men will take control. But that is my belief. It's just the natural order of things. So like when I continually say him... That's why. So, men. Men are going to take back over. And in the small groups, in the small communities, a male will be in charge. If you come across, and this happened in The Walking Dead, uh, one of the, I don't remember it was, it was a small town, and the female mayor was in charge. She died in that same season or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Like I said, I only periodically watched it here and there. I probably never finished. I maybe finished the first two seasons. I don't remember. Anyway, point of the matter is, is you will have females take control in the early stages because men are under the mindset that females are in charge. You just look at TV and most men actually, most males, I quit saying that men word because most males actually think that females are in charge. And this video is probably going to tick off some feminists. I'm not sorry. Um, if I lose a bunch of subscribers today, oops, won't miss you. And, and I mean, quite honestly, I... The feminist movement is just stupid, in my opinion. It really is. Everybody has a place on this planet. Everybody. I have a place. You have a place. Everybody has a place. Knowing your place will bring you happiness. It really will. It will. My place is not in this truck. I don't like driving it. Yes, I'm a good truck driver. I am. I have never hit anything going that way. Things have hit me quite often, actually. But, um, yeah, I, I have backed into a, a trailer once. Oops. It doesn't count. I haven't really had any, I haven't had any accidents that were my fault since I've been driving a truck. So I am a good truck driver. I don't like driving a truck. I don't, why? Because I'm, I'm gone so often. I'm, I'm never, I spend more time in this truck than I do in my house. I really do. I mean, if you factor in the hours, I'm in this vehicle more than I am in my house. And that's why I don't like it. So endeavor to get out of it. But that is not the point of the video. We are not talking about why I hate work. We're talking about dictators. We are going to need the person in charge. We're going to need it. It needs to be the person that is already in charge of your group or you. Because if you don't do it, 
somebody you don't like will. I promise you, you're going to have somebody in charge that you don't want in charge. I mean, just look at Washington. It's already happened. So in SHTF, it's going to happen throughout small towns. Now, if you've ever looked at a map, small towns are relatively close together anymore. You can't go very many miles without coming across another small town. So small towns, especially in the Midwest, so small towns, they're all going to form their own little governments for the most part. But then you're going to end up with conflict from one small town to the other small town. Maybe it was a rivalry from high school in the past, and now all the high school kids are in charge. And now instead of just playing football against the other town, they want to go shoot them. So, you know, if you don't take control, you're going to have somebody warm mongering psychotic person who wants to eat your dog and, and and marry your wife or whatever weird people do okay it's going to happen so you need to prepare for it before it happens you need to set yourself up to be in charge how do you control a population control their food their water and and people will say control the money control the resources control this and that no if people don't have food and water I mean, if you have 30,000 people standing right there and they have no food and water and my trailer is full of food and water and I have 20 guys standing around it with AR-15s ready to shoot all 30,000 of them. Uh, I, mean, I mean, that's probably an exaggeration. If there's 38,000 of them, they're going to bum rush us. Of course, some of them are going to die, but hey, they'll get the food. But just, just saying, if you are in control of the food and that crowd of people believes you are in control of the food, then you are in control of the food. If the government produces money like a United States dollar bill and they hand it to you and tell you it's worth that much food you go into the grocery store and you tell that person that hey it's worth this much food and you take that dollar and you get as much food as it's worth then you know who is in control of that situation the person who gave you the dollar the person who made you believe that that piece of paper was worth something it's not by the way look it up um yeah it really isn't the uh, United States dollar is, is a joke. But that's just currency in, in general is a joke. Uh, what is it? The gold standard is what it used to be. We used to base our currency off of gold. What is gold worth? What can you do with gold? What? You can make electronics. Are electronics going to be useful for you in an SHTF situation? Probably not. Um, unless you have power and you have security systems, surveillance, maybe things like that. But that's beside the point. I'm referring to more like phones and microprocessors and computer chips and things that require gold plating. I mean, it's used in a lot of electronics. So if you break down enough cell phones, you probably have a decent amount of gold. I don't know. People actually do that. So just what I'm saying is, is your currency isn't worth anything. So it's the belief that it is that makes you think it is, which makes the guy at the grocery store thinks it is, which makes him give you something because you handed him a piece of paper or a number on a card as it seems to be nowadays. So this is going to be the same philosophy when you're trying to be a dictator or when you're trying to take control of a situation or a town or a community, whatever it is. If you're trying to be the leader, you have to have the resources you have to people at least have to believe that you are in control of the food that's really all it is and food and water water probably is the first thing you'll need because you'll die faster without that than food but you know food and water that's what controls people um i don't remember the name of the book but there's a book that goes into this in great detail on how to control a population or take over a country and the first aspect is to control the food control how people get the food by you know the, the united states dollar is one form of control welfare is a form of control social security is a form of control because it, it just take welfare welfare for example I'll learn to talk one day take welfare for example if people don't have that welfare and there are no food banks and there's no place for them to go then they're going to look for food they're going to try to find food and if they can't find food they're going to go take food so if you come to all the welfare people in your area and you say look I have all this food and if you do this certain thing I will give you this much food nine times out of ten they're going to go do that certain thing whatever it is. And if you ever studied the Milgram experiments, as I mentioned in a previous video, I think it might have been yesterday, Milgram experiments, people, when they see an authority figure, naturally in their heads, think that that person is in charge and will do what that person says, even if that person says to do something that is immoral. And morality is definitely a 
uh, on a, a varying thing. The people's moral compass changes depending on their scenario and their situation. Um, like the moral compass of a Negan character, when he was taking over all this stuff and he was killing these people to make an example so that all these other people didn't revolt against him, he was doing the right thing. He was doing what needed to be done. And it was right to him. But to you, of course, it would not be because, yeah, if you've ever seen the show and the guy, like, hit somebody with a baseball bat, that had, anyway, it was nasty. So, the point of the matter is, is we're going to need people in charge. We're going to need a dictator. You are going to need to be the dictator or the leader of your group is going to need to be it in your community. Because if you don't do it, somebody else will. And it's going to be a very grim situation for you when somebody decides he wants to marry your wife and eat your dog or whatever it was I said earlier. That was kind of weird. Uh, that might have been another video. I don't remember. Anyway, they're going to marry your wife, eat your dog, and you're going to die. It's all grim. It's going to be grim. Just in the event of no government, take control of your situation and of everything around you that you possibly can. If you have to use force, try to be nice about it. I don't know. Anyway, if I lose a bunch of subscribers because I ticked off a bunch of feminists in this video, I probably won't miss you anyway because feminism is kind of stupid in my opinion. And yeah, I probably should stop talking before. Yeah, I probably end up with like 10 subscribers in the morning. Whatever. <laughs> have a good one. Remember, keep it grim.